Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech and in today's video, I'm going to show you all the new features you can find on iOS 11 running on an iPad Pro 10.5 inch tablet. The same tips apply to all the other iPads including the older iPad Pro 9.7, the iPad Pro 12.9, the new version and the old version and of course many other older iPads. So let's dive in and discover all the new fantastic tips for the iPad Pro. Now before we do dive in, if you do use Instagram or Twitter, make sure to follow me on both for the latest updates. All right, let's go. So the very first thing I want to talk about is the new control center, which has been modified and it's also customizable now. So all you do is you pull from the bottom and you keep pulling up till the whole multitasking pane shows up. And on the side over here, you've got the control panel as you can see. With the control panel, pay attention to these two big squares. You have this one right here and you have this one right here. You can actually press and hold these and they will expand and give you even more options. Same with the music player. If you tap and hold, it's going to expand and it's going to give you a mini music player. And over here you can play, you can go to the next track, you can change the volume if you want to. And also if you tap this button here, you can choose where you want to stream your music. You can stream to your Apple TV or a connected uh, Bluetooth player. And the same actually applies to many of these buttons. So you can press and hold on the brightness button here. It gives you a brightness slider. You can change the brightness from here up and down. Or you can enable the night shift or the true tone using these uh, buttons here. You can do the same thing with the volume. So if I press and hold, the volume slider shows up. I can change the volume up and down. Absolutely fantastic. And even with the flashlight over here, if I press and hold the flashlight icon, it comes on and you can change the intensity of the flash. So that's the minimum intensity and that's if you want to turn it off, you tap right here, it turns off. Let's tap on that camera icon, see what happens. So you have the option to take a selfie, record a video, record slow motion video, or take a photo. Alright, so you can tap these, it'll take you to the corresponding setting in the camera. And like I said, the control center is fully customizable. I'm going to show you that right now. And of course, in a couple seconds, I'm going to be talking about the entire multitasking pane and the new dock. So don't worry about that. So let's just find out how to customize the control center. So what you want to do is you want to go into the settings and then look for control center, tap on it and go into customize controls. From here on the top, you have all the controls that are already included in your control center. At the bottom, you have more controls you can add if you so desire. So I can tap this magnifier, I can tap the notes, and they're going to be added to my control center. I can add the stopwatch, and now if I go back into the uh, control center, you'll see that there's even more options on the side over here. Okay, let me go back into settings. And one thing that I'm going to specifically show you guys, by the way, if you want to remove something, you just tap this button here and you click remove. Okay. And they'll go down right here, but you can re-add it immediately. But anyway, uh, one of the new features in the control center is called screen recording, which allows you to record the screen of your iPad without any additional software. So let me show you how that is done. It's very, very easy. So let's go back to the home screen pull up the uh, control center and then press and hold or just you can either just tap it and it's going to start recording or to get additional controls you can tap and hold it's going to expand and then you have the option to turn off the microphone or the microphone on so if you want to record the ambient noise you can do that as well or you can just do it without the microphone on but basically when you're ready you tap on start recording and it's going to do a countdown, three, two, one. Now it is recording the screen as I'm uh, working with it. So let me exit. Let me just uh, swipe the screen. Let me pull it back up. When you're ready to stop recording, again, you can just tap on it or you can press and hold and then tap on stop recording. And as you can see, it says screen recording video saved to photos. You can tap that. It's going to take you to your photos at the bottom here. The recording that I just did will show up right here. Let's just tap on it, press play, and let me just click that, press play. And as you can see, exactly what I recorded has been saved to my photos, and now I can use this uh, for any purpose that I desire. Absolutely fantastic 
Uh, let's move on to the next tip. That is basically all you need to know about the control center. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the new dock and multitasking features on the iPad Pro, which have really been refined. So basically the new dock is at the bottom and it's got two uh, portions to it. It's got the first portion where you can add shortcuts. So I can grab something from here and I can just add it here as a shortcut, okay? So you can put your most frequently used apps onto the dock. And on the other side, there's a little bar that divides here. You have the frequently used options, frequently used apps and settings. So you're going to get a maximum of three of those. And basically, if you're using an app many times a day, it's going to show up at the bottom here. And uh, they're going to be sorted by most used to least used. Now, this dock has a limit of a total of 15 apps that can show at the same time. Okay, so you cannot just add as many apps as you want. You have a maximum of 15 apps you can have on that dock. Now, if you were to launch Safari, the dock disappears. So to bring up the dock, you just swipe from the bottom slowly and let go. If you keep swiping, it will bring up the entire multitasking pay, pane. Uh, but if you just want the dock, if you're in an app, you just slowly slide up and you let it go. Okay, and then from here, you can tap on something else and that's going to take you to that app. Let me go back here. Fantastic. And one more thing you can do, if you swipe all the way up, you get the full multitasking pane. From here, if you want to get rid of an app, you just go like that, you swipe it up. And of course, you can swipe over to see more apps that were hiding over here. So you can have a lot of apps that are frozen in the background you can access from here. And then the other thing I'm gonna talk about uh, with this new interface is the multitasking. Multitasking has three different options. One of them is called the slide over. Then you have the split screen multitasking, and then you have what's called PIP, which means picture in picture viewing. So let's go over all three. So let's say you have Safari running in the background and you want to access another app really quickly and just move back to Safari. So what you do is you bring up the dock. From the dock, let's say that you want to read the news really quick. Let's see, let's say you want to get some updates. All you do is grab that app and pull it to the screen and it drops to the side to the right side of that screen. Now with this thing, both of these windows are active. So I can use this window and I can use this window. But as you can see right now, it is not split screen multitasking. It is just a slide over view. You can even take this guy, you can slide it to this side. Okay, so it depends. So it depends on which side you want it at. Okay, so you can slide around, you can uh, use this window, you can read the news. I can tap this for example, and you can go in and read the news. And then if I don't want this window anymore, let's say I'm done reading the news, I can swipe it to the right and it goes away. Now I'm back at Safari. Now what if I wanted to keep browsing this and also see the news on the side in a complete split screen format? Again, you bring up the dock, you bring the news, you put it right here, it goes to the right side. And this time, all you do is from the top, you slide down and now you have split screen multitasking which also allows you to, uh, in the middle here, you can resize them. So you can have half and half uh, real estate for both apps. Now I can swipe through here and I can keep reading the news if I so desire. Absolutely fantastic. This, by the way, is called the split screen uh, view. Now one more thing you can do with the split screen view is if you exit this and if you pull it back up again, that split screen is gonna stay here for reaccess. okay? So if I tap this, it's gonna restart in the same location. And one more great thing you can do with the split screen is let me just pull up the um, iMessages here, okay? So I'm gonna send a message in a second to this phone number here. Uh, let's say that I'm looking for a photo. Let's say I made a video and I wanna share that video uh, with this person. Again, what I can do is I can do drag and drop. And if you pull this up, just like that, the dock I mean, uh, let me go into my photos, which is right here. So I bring the photos, oops, bring up the dock, grab the photos, put it right there. And uh, let's say that I wanna send that video that I just had to this person right here. All I do is drag and drop. Okay, so as you can see, and then I can slide that away. And now I can send this video to that contact if I so desired. So drag and drop is now available. And just so you know, I could have done the same thing like this. So if I pull that up, if I pull the photos up here, let's create full split screen. 
I can make it just for more convenience. I can have it just like that. Now I can grab any one of these pictures and I can slide them over and send them to that person as well. And the final thing I'm going to talk about in regards to the multitasking is PIP. Now PIP is an older feature available also on iOS 10, but I just want to show you anyway because a lot of people are not aware that it's there. So let me launch an application that plays video. Let's say Crunchyroll. And let me just play a video really quick here, just a random video. And then from here, what I can do, just resume, is at the bottom, you'll see an icon. Okay, so that icon pertains to the PIP view. If you tap it, it actually minimizes that screen. I can actually exit this app now, and that video is gonna continue to play at the bottom here. And there's a couple things you can do. You can put it up here, you can put it over there, you can put it here, and you can continue doing some work. So I can continue browsing the web. Let me just get rid of that multitasking. Browsing the web, and I can continue watching this video on the side, and I can even pinch it like that to make it bigger, or pinch it again to make it smaller. All right, so that's a great way to enjoy a video while you're still browsing the web and doing other stuff, just like you would do on a PC. And again, you can pause it, you can tap this, it'll go back into the app, or you can tap X and it disappears. So that's PIP picture in picture. Now PIP is not compatible with all video playing apps. Uh, Crunchyroll, Netflix, and stuff like that is available, but not all video playing apps are going to be available. Of course, the built-in application for um, uh, the iPad for iOS is already compatible. All right, so that was all about multitasking on iOS 11. Let's move on to some other cool features. One more thing you have is the new dark mode. So if you pull down the panel, you see that you have gray background. If you look at the dock, you have gray background, white gray. If you go to the settings, it's all white. So if it puts too much strain on your eyes, what you could do is you could, you could go to general, go to accessibility, go to display here, and then go to invert colors. And instead of choosing classic invert, which was an old option, you can use smart invert and that's gonna invert the screen into a darker mode. So when I go back out, look at the dock. It's now a darker background. If I pull down the notifications panel, again, darker background. So it's just easy on the eyes. This is called a new uh, dark mode. Actually, it's called a smart invert, but we have dubbed it as the dark mode. Okay, so that's something you also uh, have on iOS 11. And of course, there's been some new uh, additions to the keyboard. So let me pull up the messages here. And here's that keyboard. And what you could do is, as you can see, on top of every character, every uh, alphabet, you have the number, you got the symbols. And normally what you would have to do is you have to tap this icon to access the numbers and the symbols. Now what Apple has done is instead of tapping this to access the uh, at symbol, you can simply, let's, normally when you press this, you get A, you can flick up and they'll get you the at symbol. I'm sorry, flick down. So if you flick down, you get the app uh, at symbol. Normally you would have to press this button, then press at. Now you can access every character that you see on the top that is not bolded, even the number one, by flicking down. One, two, three, number symbol, dollar symbol. Not bad at all. This makes typing a little bit quicker. The next thing you can do is you can use Siri now for translation. Now, it doesn't support a lot of languages, but it's gonna be, they're gonna be added over time. Let me give you one example using Chinese. So basically, let's go like that. Translate, how are you from English to Chinese? Not bad at all. So you get this little bar, you can tap on this. That will actually uh, pronounce it, so you can actually use it in real time. So anytime you're wondering what languages Siri can actually translate at a given moment, because like I said, it's gonna be updated, you can simply ask her. You can say something like this. Hey Siri, can you translate Japanese? I can't tra so as you can see, those are the current options that we have, uh, French, German, Italian, Chinese, and Spanish, all right? But like I said, they're gonna be adding more very soon. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is has to do with the Maps application. So let me launch, launch Maps. And basically what they did was they added some more details to their Maps especially in regards to major airports and shopping centers throughout the world. So right now I'm focused on uh, John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. And watch carefully as I zoom in, 
it's actually gonna start to show me what's inside the building. So the building is right here. This is the entire airport right here. If I zoom in, it'll start to show me the details inside of John F. Kennedy International Airport. So it looks like there's a bar and grill in there. If you tap it, you get some more information which is based on Yelp. So you can see pictures of everything and the inside of the airport, which allows for better planning overall. So you'll get more details on major airlines and also major shopping centers. Another great feature that was added to iOS 11 is the files folder. So this is the icon. You tap it. It's called the files app. So basically it allows you to aggregate all your cloud locations here. And also if you tag uh, items, you can also access them via tags and all that stuff. And basically this is the most important part. I can access my iCloud drive. I can access my drive, Google Drive from here. So I can go in here and I can see all my files in here. Okay. And then I can also access my Dropbox. I would have to connect to it. And then any app that supports the file system is going to be able to show up right here, such as PDF Expert. So if I tap on PDF Expert, uh, I can uh, access all the files that I have in my PDF Expert app that are clouded. So they'll show up right there. Okay, so it's a nice place. It's a centralized location to see all your files on your iPad. And of course, as you know, one of the most important things uh, for the iPad Pro is the Apple Pencil. And of course, there's a whole bunch of options that were added to, to iOS 11 just for the Apple Pencil. So what I did was I actually created a separate video to go over all those options one by one. Link to that video is down in the description box below. So go check it out. They added some really fantastic features for the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro for iOS 11. And of course, it applies to all the iPad Pros, the 10.5, the 9.7, the 12.9 old and the new version. So go watch that video. Link down below in the description box. Beyond that, this is the end of the video, guys. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come and give this video a thumbs up. And I hope you learn everything you needed to know regarding iOS 11. If I missed anything, just drop a comment down below and let me know and let other viewers know as well. And of course, if you do use Instagram or Twitter, make sure to follow me on both uh, for the latest updates. My Twitter and Instagram account is at Saki Tech Online. Guys, have a fantastic day.